What's good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic Monday and Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have your WWE TLC 2020 full show review and results for you, ladies and gentlemen. I usually say guys, but for some reason I changed it up. Who gives a shit? Diving into the show, guys. TLC 2020, if you guys don't know how these videos work, we're going to be running through the entire WWE TLC 2020 show, breaking down what happened, letting you guys know exactly what took place, letting you know my thoughts on the show. What did I think? Was it shitty? Was it great? Was it somewhere in between? We're going to find out here together as I progress through the show, tell you about it, let you know what happened, any badass attires, anything like that, and everything in between. Coming into the show, I was actually kind of excited for it, which usually when I'm excited for shows, they end up falling flat, and then usually when I'm not looking forward to shows or I don't really care about the show, they end up overperforming. So we'll see if that trend continues here tonight. My boy KO's back on pay-per-view. We got some great matchups, lineups in, in, in sync for us tonight, and I think this show could deliver. But let's dive into it, guys, and find out what took place at TLC 2020 and was it worth a damn? Let's dive in and find out. Now, I'm not going to cover the first kickoff show. It was an eight-man tag with a bunch of people going on. I think we need to dive into the end of the matchup where Big E hit a big ending on Sami Zayn, pinning him. So I'm guessing Big E versus Sami Zayn will be our moving forward Intercontinental Championship program, which I'm actually pretty excited about. But outside of that, guys, nothing else pretty much happened on the kickoff show. So let's dive into this main show. So we started out things hot, guys. We started things out with the WWE Championship TLC match between Drew Mac McIntyre and AJ Styles almost was also in the corner of AJ Styles. This matchup was hard hitting. Coming in, I was really excited for it. You got Drew McIntyre and AJ Styles locking up. A lot of people have been wanting to see this, especially in this capacity. TLC match, WWE Championship. I mean, this right here was a banger. And I think the match was pretty good. I don't think it was immaculate. I definitely think that Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles TLC match from 2016 was better, but this was still good. It was hard hitting. Some great ladder stuff. Uh, I definitely, I'd say go back and watch it. I think it's definitely the rewatch if you guys missed the show or whatever, but I think the big thing about this story and this matchup is what took place in the matchup in that Miz comes down to the ring Brad, the money in the bank holder comes down to the ring, so Miz comes down with his money in the bank contract, Drew McIntyre's about to climb the ladder, Miz comes in, hits him with a chair, he's not alone Brad, he's got he's got his boy John Morrison right, he's got John Morrison with him as well, he comes down there and he takes Drew McIntyre down, puts him through a table like he's like standing in front of a table, he puts him through the table, I'm pretty sure that's the thing, he like hit him with a chair, kind of stunned him a little bit, planted him through the table. The Miz is right there. They cash in the Money in the Bank contract. The Miz looked like a damn goofball, Brad. He's standing there. He's got like all the time in the world. He's just standing there like a moron. He could have literally climbed the ladder and won the damn thing in the blink of an eye, but he took his sweet ass time, and he's just sitting there barely climbing and looking like a cocky some bitch. and then here comes Omos, right? Omos gets in there, pretty much beats the hell out of him. Actually, he scooped him up, scoops him off the ladder, drops him through a table, chases John Morrison out of the arena, so John Morrison's taken out of the picture, Omos is taken out of the picture, we're left to just these three men, they do battle for a little bit at the top of the ladders, back and forth, back and forth and at the end of the day, Drew McIntyre retains the WWE Championship and is still your champion, so the Money in the Bank briefcase is wasted wasted for another year. You guys know I talk about, you know, how many times it's been wasted now. Another streak is added. It was already added when Otis won it, but I guess him losing the briefcase could have given it new life. But yeah, wasted contract, guys. Miz is another member of the L Club. He can go join Trash Corbin. And yeah, he he, he, he lost the match, man. Drew McIntyre's still champion. I do appreciate the shock factor and everything like that. I, I was kind of on the edge of my seat. It was an exciting and fun matchup, but I am glad that Drew retained. I think it would have been cool to see a curveball in the Miz getting that, but uh, that did not happen. That did not happen, and Drew McIntyre is still your WWE Champion. Pretty great opening to the show. Would that continue? Let's find out. Next up, guys, was the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Sasha Banks and Carmella, and coming in, I wasn't really looking forward to it that much, simply just because I knew this was a stepping stone for Sasha Banks on her title, and for her title reign, and I just, you know, I just wasn't looking forward to it. I like Carmella. I like, you know, her, her persona. I like her new reinvented character she's got going on right now and I love Sasha but I, I don't know I just wasn't into this matchup however this matchup completely delivered on all and all aspects of the matchup I think this was Carmella's best match ever I think this was Carmella's best match ever it had a lot of passion it had a lot of great back and forth between the two ladies like this matchup kind of slapped titties Brad like it was it was intense I thought it was really good if you guys missed this matchup definitely go check it out I was not expecting this whatsoever hats off to both women I guess 
you know, Carmella has definitely improved in the ring, and it definitely helped her being with Sasha, who's one of the best workers in the world. Sasha is a beast. Carmella over-delivered in this thing. I thought both ladies totally killed it, and this was a great matchup. Sasha Banks does win after locking in the bank statement and making Carmella tap out, but damn, you gotta be proud if you're Carmella. What a great effort here, and I enjoyed this matchup a lot. Next up, guys, was our Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Hurt Business and the New Day, a matchup that I was very much looking forward to, a matchup that I thought would low-key be match of the night. And my God, did this thing deliver, Brad. That is how you write a damn good football game. This matchup was 100 miles an hour from the jump at the opening bell. This match went 90 to nothing. Like, you couldn't even look away from the screen. Fantastic match. Fantastic story. Great. Just overall everything, man. Three for three on the night so far for TLC. This tag team match was absolutely brilliant. You guys know, if you're a fan of the channel, you know how much of a fan I am of Cedric Alexander. I love him. I think he is brilliant. I think he is amazing. He's one of my favorite talents in the world as well. And he delivered on every aspect. Every man in this match did great. Even MVP on the outside was doing his thing. But they were literally just flying all over the damn ring, man. Like, everybody in this match was getting their stuff in. Huge reversals and near falls and everything, bro. This thing had me on the edge of my seat. At the end of the match, though, Shelton Benjamin hits a huge superplex off the top rope to Kofi Kingston after Xavier Woods gets taken out by a bunch of big moves. Kofi Kingston's, you know, stumbling, trying to get to his feet, and Shelton Benjamin's like waiting on him, you know, probably about to hit him. About to hit him with another finishing move, and then Cedric Alexander's just waiting on the turnbuckle, and he's like, F this, bro. He self-tags himself in, lumbar checks Kofi, and wins the match for the Hurt Business, clearly planting some seeds for a future breakup, but damn if I didn't enjoy this match, man. What a great match. New Raw Tag Team Champions are the Hurt Business. I enjoyed this. I approve of this. Cedric Alexander for the win. Great ish all around. Go back and watch this match. Next up, guys, was our Women's Tag Team Championship match. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler coming in, defending against Asuka, and it would have been Lana as her tag team partner, but she was taken out by Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, so she was out of this matchup, and we had to find a replacement partner, and who would that partner be? None other than the Queen herself. Didn't we all know it? I'm pretty sure I put it in my fantasy booking. I figured this would be the case. So Charlotte does return, which it is good for the women's division to have a big name like Charlotte back. I feel like she elevates everybody, but Jesus Christ, man. She comes back after a huge hiatus, and what do they do? They say, here's more gold, Charlotte. Put it around your way, Charlotte. Automatic championship, right? And I love how they have to keep flashing back to the backstage area to show Ric Flair watching on, because don't forget, this is Ric Flair's daughter. Hey, hey, her last name's Flair. You remember? Hey, hey. Uh... So this matchup was pretty decent. You know, it wasn't bad by any means. I thought when it first started off, I was like, Jesus Christ, man, because I'm not a Nia Jax or Shayna Baszler fan. I don't like the Women's Tag Team Championships. I feel like I feel like my paperweight on my desk is worth more. However, these women deliver. When you have Asuka and you have Charlotte in here, I mean, damn, they're going to put on a good football game, and it was pretty solid. It was probably the best Women's Tag Team Championship match I've seen in a minute, and Asuka and Charlotte do win. They, uh, they are now the Women's Tag Team Champions, so now we have Asuka two belts in the house, which I'm pretty proud of. I love Asuka. But I don't know. This is definitely leading to Asuka versus Charlotte. I mean, that's obviously inevitable. It'll be the same old deal, but that match is good at least, but there you go. Asuka and Charlotte are your new tag champions, and Ric Flair's daughter's back. Next up, guys, we had the Blue Universal Championship match between Roman Reigns and my boy KO returning to pay-per-view here. This is probably the match that I was most looking forward to. This one, the opener, and then the tag team match between New Day and the Hurt Business, but my boy Kevin Owens going to war here, and holy shit, we thought Hurt Business and New Day was the match of the night, Brad. No, ma'am. This right here is the bonafide match of the night. I don't know how you could possibly top this. We had one more match to go before this, but I really have no idea if you could top this, man. This TLC match, Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens beat the hell out of each other. Uso, as Michael Cole likes to call him, got involved. KO, like, straight as soon as the bell rang, man, these guys were going right at it. KO jumps Roman Roman just goes straight to the ground and pounds, beating the hell out of him. We get super kicks. We got all kinds of crazy, nasty stuff. Frog splash off the apron. Kevin, literally, I thought he broke Uso's ankle. Lots of shenanigans. Just a classic damn football game. And I thought for, like, I knew that Roman was going to win, right? Like, I knew it for a fact that Roman was going to retain the championship. But on so many goddamn occasions on this, during this matchup, I thought KO had it. He was so close so many times, and I literally was a believer for a second. I mean, he looked like a damn animal.
animal, man. Both of these guys beat the hell out of each other. Kevin Owens looks like a monster. Like, they booked him beautifully in this match in defeat. You couldn't look any better losing a football game than the way that KO lost this matchup. But damn, man, I knew Roman would win, but I was so ready for KO to win that matchup. But I cannot wait to see where he goes from here. I don't know who the hell is going to beat Roman Reigns. Who the hell is going to beat Roman Reigns? I, I don't know who the hell is going to beat Roman Reigns. And I swear to God, if it's Goldberg, I swear to God, I don't know if I can watch the product anymore. If they feed this beautiful Roman Reigns character to Goldberg, I will literally shit in my hand and throw it at my ceiling. I shit you not. But damn, this was good, man. This whole pay-per-view so far has just made me super excited. Like, damn, man. I wish weekly television could be this good. If we could just get everything to be centric around good television. But what a great match, man. Roman retains as he should. I don't think he should have lost, but it would have been really sick to see KO win. But damn. Go back and watch this match, man. This match effing ruled. And for a main event, guys, we had the Firefly Inferno match between The Fiend and Randy Orton. And you guys know I'm a big Randy Orton guy. So coming into this match, you know, I had, I don't know, I had mixed emotions simply just because you guys know we've had House of Horrors match. We had the Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton saga before. And I love long-term booking and long-term feuds such as this, you know, with the, the vignette for this was absolutely fantastic. Drew me in. WWE's video packages are always the absolute best. But I didn't know what to expect. You know, I didn't know if it was going to fall flat on its face or deliver. And I would say that this delivered. I definitely say go back and watch this, which was very weird, though. At the very beginning of the matchup, when both guys did their entrance, there was no fire when we first came out. So Twitter and everybody watching was like, is there going to be fire? It's an Inferno match. What the hell is this? I don't even know why they call it a Firefly Inferno match because there was no Firefly, whatever the hell. But anyways, this match was pretty badass. I enjoyed it. I was thoroughly enjoying it. I thought all the camera work was great. I do believe this was pre-taped. All of the different Thunderdome videos were like other videos from past matches and stuff that they had saved. So that was a really, really cool aspect that WWE did. The camera work in this thing was amazing. The Just the environment and the, the camera work and the vibe and the flames, noises you could hear just really added to the matchup. I thought all of the sequences they had was great. And at the, uh, what I was saying was, is when the match first started, the fire, you didn't, there was no fire, so everybody was kind of confused, and then about six or so minutes into the matchup, the Fiend, like, does, like, a cane thing, and all the flames erupt into place, and I thought it would have been way better if he did that during his entrance, because then it would have been like, oh, that's badass, there's all the fire, so I think that was something that they missed out on, but nonetheless, I think both guys delivered, the story was great. At the end of the matchup, Randy Orton actually sets the Fiend on fire, and the Fiend gets in the ring, runs at Randy, he RKO's him, and then the Fiend is laid up facing the ceiling and he lights the whole damn fiend on fire. They clearly cut away and like made like a like a dummy or a mannequin looking fiend. Like you could see the mask quality fell off. Like it, it, it's obviously a dummy laying in the ring but him setting the fiend on fire and it like burning alive in the ring as it laid out was super badass. Then he strikes the pose. It was very very sick. I thought that was so badass. That was very very sick visuals and th this was excellent man. That was absolutely fantastic and I love the visuals of this. I think they did a really great job. I think WWE with their pre-tape matches, they kill it, man. I mean, what the hell's going on? Every time they do a pre-tape match, I feel like it pretty much delivers for the most part. But overall, TLC thoughts, this show was badass. You know, it came in hoping it would be badass. I was expecting it to be good. I was looking forward to it, and it actually delivered this time. You love to F and see it, Brad. Damn, what a good, what a good show. I'd say the worst match was the women's tag team match, and it wasn't even that bad. I expected it to be much worse, and it actually wasn't that bad. I was intrigued the whole show. I thought everybody on this card did their job. I was bought in. It was fantastic. I'd say match of the night was Roman and KO, but damn, I enjoyed this whole show pretty much, and that is nice to see. That uplifts my spirits going into this Christmas holiday, and damn, that was good. I enjoyed that a lot. I think TLC, I, I, I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure TLC was the best start to finish show of the year. I'm sure there's some that may be a little better, or maybe there's some that are right up there with it, but it could just be recency, you know, in my brain, but that was very good. That was a very good show. I enjoyed it thoroughly all the way through. I thought the storytelling we got was great. Not a perfect show by any means, but this was good stuff, man. Excellent effing show, man. I'm getting the hell out of here. That is going to do it for your TLC review, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you thought of TLC down in the comments section below and always 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 never forget to not cross the damn line you don't ever listen do you you cross the line
line I've been